Hi, my name is Bree, and I have the privilege of serving as Chief of Staff here at Transformation Church. At TC, our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And we just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you're watching from. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word just for you. So let's jump into today's message. How about let's make some noise for Jesus in the house. The lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the rock of ages. I don't need any praise. Let's make some noise for Jesus. That's who we worship. That's who we magnify. Is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can I get you to like high five two people and tell them something is going to happen on today? Yes. Something is going to happen on today. Today, Listen, I've been praying. I said, God, I, I don't want this to just be a service. I want this to be an encounter. We don't want programs. We want your presence. See, everybody wants a movement, but we don't recognize we cannot have a movement until we have first become a moved people. And so what God wants to do is move us from death to life. Move people. He wants to move us from ratchet to righteousness. He wants to move us. He wants to move on this encounter. I, I don't want you to have casual Christianity. I, I want to move you to crazy, radical, hard-headed, sold-out faith. I'm not talking about faith that has a bed sore. Y'all know what bed sores are? Bed sores, they are a pressure ulcer. It means you have been in the same place for so long that you need a nurse, a caregiver, or a doctor to push you or to move you. And I pray, God, would you anoint me for this moment to take on the nature of a spiritual caregiver so we can push some people and move some people. God desires for us to go to another level in him. But we cannot experience a movement if we have not first been moved people. Can we talk? I'm tired of being in the same place. Like I'm cool with taking tests, but I'm not cool with taking the same test. I'm gonna keep going. I'm cool with taking tests, but I'm not cool with taking the same test from the same teacher. I'm going to keep going. I'm cool with taking tests, but I'm not cool with taking the same test from the same teacher over the same subject. Can I keep going? I'm cool with taking tests, but I'm not cool with taking the same test from the same teacher over the same subject in the same class. I got one more. Okay. I'm cool with taking tests, but I'm not cool with taking the same test from the same teacher over the same subject in the same class and keep making the same grade. After a while, I want to pass. There's a reason why the fifth grade chair is a different size than the pre-K chair. Because after a while, your butt should not be able to fit in certain places. And I want to speak to a people who are ready to grow. Hi, Transformation Nation. <laughs> My name is Jerry Flowers. I reside in Houston, Texas, born and raised on the playgrounds where I spend most of my days. <laughs> and I'm just so honored. It would be ministerial malpractice for me not to stop and pause. And can we make some noise for Pastor Mike and Natalie Todd, just their vision. You can do better than that. This is a rarity. This is not normal. Just Pastor Mike Todd, his heart is so amazing. See, I thought I had crazy faith. I really did until I met him. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, you thought you had crazy faith because you were surrounded by people who have safe faith. <laughs> That's a whole nother sermon. That's a whole nother sermon. But th there is something that is beating on my heart that I want to share with you that I believe is gonna greatly bless your life. Um, 
It's going to challenge many of us. This message might come for your scalp, your, your pinky toe, your edges. We're coming for all of it, for all of it. And we want to start from the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke is where we're going to start our reading. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verse 10. Let's go before the Father in prayer, and then we're going to start this sermonic journey. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for this moment. You're so awesome. Thank you for allowing us to see a new day, a day that we never saw before, and a day that we'll never see again. Help us to recognize it was not the dog that woke us up. It was not the alarm clock that woke us up. It wasn't the baby that woke us up. Grace woke us up. And we're so thankful for the gift of salvation and your grace and your mercy. And I thank you, God, most importantly, that you are glorified. We live in a generation that's obsessed with self. Far be it from us to want to build our platform and not be focused on your glory. And the same prayer I pray each and every week like I prayed in private. Anoint me as your oracle, the soundtrack, the PA system of heaven, so that when we look back on this particular service and this encounter, we will be able to say it was at this moment that something in my life changed. In Jesus' name, and everybody who agrees with that prayer would just shout in the room and online, amen. How you shout online, you just put amen in all caps, exclamation point, exclamation point. Luke chapter 13 is where we're going to start our journey on this wonderful Sunday morning. Verse 10, it says, now he, speaking of Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and in could no way raise herself up. This is for all of the people who are trying to straighten your own life up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. Please don't miss the order. The order matters. He saw her. He called her. He loosed her. And then he touched her. <laughs> Some people want to be loose, but they haven't got his touch. And some people want to be seen, but they haven't been called. We're going to talk about it throughout the sermon. Okay. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified herself. Is that what the text says? Glorified her platform. Is that what it says? Glorified who? God. Watch this. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Oh, boy, is furious. Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. I, I want us to pause real quick. And I want us to notice the heart posture of this ruler of the synagogue. Notice the heart posture of religious spirited people. Because most of us missed it. Religious spirited people can't stand when you get healed. Am I in the text? This religious spirited, I want you to notice the heart of the ruler of the synagogue. He is not excited that she is healed. He is not even celebrating that she is healed. He's not rejoicing over the fact that she is healed. He's not giving glory to God with her because she's healed. He didn't think to himself, you know what? This woman has been crooked for 18 years. She came to church crooked, but then left church straight. He's not noticing that part. He's so caught up with law that he doesn't know how to celebrate healing. He's so caught up with religion. And you see, I bet this woman, when she left service that day, she probably was like, baby, church hit different. <laughs> I came to service and the king said it straight. 
This is so good. The king said it straight. Now watch this. She really didn't even have to tell everybody that she met Jesus. People probably had to take a double take and ask themselves, is that the same woman who used to come in church crooked? Is that the same woman who was forced to look at the dirt? Is that the same woman who was depressed? Because sometimes depression is the real you pressed down. Is that the same woman? What if I told you that sometimes God wants to do a miracle so massive, so crazy, that you don't have to do an IG Live about it? You don't have to do a YouTube short about it? You don't have to vlog about it? You don't have to even post about it? They'll just see the miracle walking. Maybe if I can get 10 of y'all to recognize I want God to do something so massive in my life, I'm not going to have to post about it. My miracle is going to be my marketing agent. They're just going to be able to see it walking. You can see it. I'm going to give you more Bible to corroborate my claim. There was this time when Jesus in Mark chapter 5, Jairus rolled up on him and said, hey, come to my daughter's house. She, she's sick. On the way there, she dies. Jesus gets to the house, and everybody's crying and wailing. Jesus walks in and says, what's all this? <laughs> why, why are y'all crying? She's not dead. She's asleep. Yeah. Then the Bible says they laughed at him, and this is the part of Jesus we don't preach enough. The very next thing it says, Jesus put them all out. Because if you didn't know it, our God serves eviction notices. Ooh. He's like, Jairus, okay, auntie got to go, Sheila got to go, Rayla got to go, Becky got to go. You want something to get up? Something's got to get out. You want a miraculous miracle? You want it to get up? Certain things have to get out. This is Bible. It's good. Y'all should read it sometime. <laughs> Puts them all out. I wonder, ooh, this is not even on my notes. I just feel this. I wonder who under the sound of my voice and watching online, you're asking God to bless something that he wants you to put out. You want this to grow? That has got to go. You want this to get up? Then that has to get out. Just the disciples and parents stay. He walks over to the little girl and says, Talia Takumi which means little girl, get up. She gets up, watch this. Jesus says, give her something to eat and don't tell nobody. Now, I was a youth pastor for nine years, so I like to make the Bible come alive. Listen at what Jesus just said. He raises this girl and says, don't tell nobody. I'm like, okay, hold on, Jesus. There was just a crowd with you. As you were coming to Jairus' house, there was a woman that had issue of blood that touched the hem of your garment to where you stopped and said, who touched me? I know it was crowded because once you said, who touched me, the disciples turned around and said, Lord, everybody's touching you. He was like, no, this touch was different. At that moment, they came from Jairus' house and said, don't bother the teacher anymore. Your daughter's dead. Jesus goes to Jairus' house. He sees everybody crying. I'm sure they checked her pulse. I'm sure they tried to see if she was breathing. So when they said she's dead and he said she's asleep, what do you mean don't tell nobody? They're going to see the girl walking. <laughs> Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. They're going to see the girl walking. Jesus does a miracle so massive, you don't have to post. They're going to see it. <laughs> you don't have to fight back they going to see it. You don't have to blog about it. they going to see it. But can I trust you to have the character for me to give you a miracle and you don't feel the need to clap back? Because vengeance is mine. Watch this. Vengeance is stealing. That doesn't belong to you. Somebody say that's God's. That's God's. That's God's. What God desires is to set certain things straight. I wanted to give you a miracle to where you could see it walking. Your marriage went from divorce papers to wedding anniversary vacation packages. They could see the miracle walking. 
You went from needing to get high to now you're serving the most high. They could see it walking. They could see it walking. Can I get somebody to say they could see it? I want to set some things straight. Your peace, I want to set that straight. Your joy, I want to set that straight. I hear your prayers, God win, and I'm asking you, when are you going to let me set this straight? I want to speak around this thought from this subject for a few moments on this Sunday morning. He set it straight. He set it straight. He set it straight. This, this woman didn't even need to try to force people to believe her miracle. Because, ooh, y'all ready for this? Y'all didn't say nothing. Are y'all ready for this? Yeah. Okay, this side didn't say anything, so I'm going to look right at y'all. Are y'all ready for this? Yeah. Okay, once you have had a king encounter, it strengthens your ability to ignore critics. Because when there's some things in my life that I know God set straight, when I know that he set my thinking straight, when I know that he set my singleness straight, oh, I was tired of counterfeits. When I know that he set my marriage straight, matter of fact, the next time somebody talks about you, you know what your response should be? I'm straight. <laughs> Can I get somebody to say I'm straight? We're not talking about a cocky straight. We're saying, no, by the blood of Jesus, I was crooked, but he made me straight. My mind is now straight. My obedience is now straight. Enough with window shopping at obedience, but then purchasing our excuses. You want the favor? Favor is married to obedience. When you live a life of obedience, I'll put a ring on your finger. Favor will put a ring on it when you live a life of obedience. I want to set it straight. I want to set it straight. And here's the thing, though. This woman didn't need to respond much because they could see it walking, right? So we have to remember this. One of the ways you know that it's a blessing from God is when you don't have to exchange your mental health as payment to keep it. You know why some of us are so numb? Because you're trying to make it work. God is like, that's not me, that's you. That's not my will, that's your will. So you're losing your mental health trying to keep what God didn't sin, and that's in God to bless what hell sent. One way you can tell if it's a blessing from God, you don't have to exchange your mental health as payment just so that you can keep it. He said it straight. He said it straight. He said it straight. He said it straight. Y'all have to excuse me this morning. I, I just refuse to believe that you and I were created divinely by a sovereign God just to come to his house and leave the same. I refuse to believe that. He said it straight. I refuse to believe that you and I were divinely created by a sovereign God to come to the house of prayer just to get some hype. I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe that you and I were divinely created by God to just come to his house, the house of prayer, and get some emotional sugar-coated content when we're called to be salt and the light of the world. Why are you throwing shade when you're called to be light? He said it straight. He said it straight. I just refuse to believe that we were designed by God to come into his house, enter into his sanctuary, just so that you could mark off on your checkbox and your religious activity was completed on today. And girl, I went to church. I believe every single time the saints of God gather, something should happen. I don't think that's old school. That's doctrine. I see it in the biblical church. Every time the people of God come together, something should happen. The gospel should be preached. Praise should be lifted. Worship should be lifted. Repentance should happen. Chains should be broken. Hell should be terrified. Devils should flee. Unclean spirits have got to go. Something should happen. God, when is revival going to happen? When you let me set it straight. Let me set it straight. 
The house of God miracle should happen, regardless if it's a miracle of a changed mind or a miracle of a changed heart. Because some of us, if we be honest, the biggest miracle you ever seen is you don't want to do what you used to. Am I talking to anybody? Like, I'm free and free indeed. I'm not just like, I don't want to do it. No, I don't even have the taste buds anymore. You ever look at like a Facebook memory and you're like, my God, I can't believe <laughs> that was me? <laughs> that's not a memory, that's a nightmare. <laughs> he desires to set it straight. He desires to set it straight. This is how we see. We go from being a stripper to being a praise dancer and a worshiper. The king set it straight. This is how we go from being a dope dealer to being a hope dealer. The king, he set it straight. This is how we go from giving God honorable mention to having a devotion life and a life of repentance. Hear me, because if I do not know God's voice in devotion, I will not know it in direction. Won't know it in direction. He, he said it straight. Can I get somebody to say he said it straight? That's what the king of glory desires to do is set it straight. So hear me. This is why it's so dangerous for us to ever judge anybody by the chapter we walked in on. Because in one chapter, I might be pain absorbed. But in the next chapter, I'm heaven's billboard. Now, let me come for your scout. We should never judge anybody because we all have a chapter in our story that we don't want read out loud. Okay, all right. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk to me. There are certain chapters where you like skip that. Because if we be honest, we give selective testimonies. <laughs> yeah, I did that, I did that. But if they really know, <laughs> if they really know. I desire to set it straight. What happened to the church to where a woman could be crooked for eight years? years and the ruler of the synagogue that's like the pastor the religious spirited individual is not excited that she went from crooked to straight he's furious what if I told you it's because some people like the unhealed version of you better I need to say that one more time some people like the unhealed version of you better. You're only compatible because y'all are both broken in the same area. They like the, oh, that hit somebody. They only like the unhealed version of you. But if you heal, you will remove what y'all had in common. This is so good. So sometimes I'm upset about your healing because you no longer need my sin together because you're taking what we had in common. This, this, this right here we see in the text, we are still dealing with this today. Not caught up with healing. We're talking about law. Not the fact that, she, that she's, she's healed. I like that, whoever shot it. Let's set it straight. I feel it. Let, let, let's set this straight. Some people like the unhealed version of you better because religious spirited individuals, who I like to call religious manipulators, they can't stand lights they can't eclipse. So they feel the need to unscrew your light so that they can shine and then we'll label it God's work. They can't stand lights they can't eclipse. So let me unscrew it so that I can shine and then I'm going to label it God's work. See, when you have true god dance, you recognize they could be lit, I could be lit because we're all called to be light. We're all called to be light. Somebody say he said it straight. This is what Jesus desired to do. He said it straight. And this is one of the things I'm so passionate about. I'm so passionate, I'm trying, sis. I'm so passionate about getting us to heal on the inside 
because I recognize this at my home church, just from counseling sessions and talking to people. I'm like, man, certain people struggle to even carry out commandments due to trauma. For example, love your neighbor as you love yourself. How can I do that if I hate myself? So that, that, that part of Christianity that we're supposed to do, love your neighbor as yourself, you struggle with doing that because you don't even love yourself. And I'm not talking about some self-love and some, I'm talking about loving the way God made you for his purpose, for his glory. Not for your platform, not for followers. That's a whole nother sermon. I'm like, okay, we're obsessed with followers when Jesus wants us to make disciples. We're obsessed with likes, likes, and God wants us to be liked. Sit it straight. <laughs> I, I want to set some things straight. Because, unfortunately, when you have biblical ignorance, you are easier to manipulate. You are easier to deceive when you don't have a personal king encounter. So you'll take somebody's word for it versus you have your own relationship with God and you got receipts. <laughs> I know in Proverbs, he said this. I, I, I know in Daniel, he said this. But when you don't know his love letters, you're easier to deceive when you don't know the word of God for yourself. Y'all ready for this? Not convinced. Y'all ready for this? Okay. So when we have biblical intelligence, you're able to not allow people to project on you. Girl, you got trust issues. Bro, you got trust issues. How about this? Um, I, I don't have trust issues. It's I've seen this pattern before. I know God for myself, and I refuse to fall back into a season of recovery because I believe your deception, and that's not Bible. Everything that sounds good doesn't mean it's sound or good. You wouldn't drink milk that used to be good. If, if, if you would, then we'll pray for you later. We'll, we'll set some things straight. This woman in our foundational text who goes nameless, I guarantee you she does not care about the religious spirited individuals who don't like the fact that she got healed on the Sabbath. This woman in our foundational text, I can guarantee you she does not care about the ruler of the synagogue having a problem with the fact that she got healed. Because I'm telling you, once you know the king, it doesn't matter what you think. You don't know what it was like to walk around like this. You don't know my struggle. You don't know what it was like <coughs> coughing because of the dust of people's feet walking in front of me. You don't know what it was like struggling to look up to see who was talking to me. You don't know what it was like to walk around and be forced to look at the dirt. You don't know what it was like for a shower to be limiting. And there's certain parts of my body and certain parts that when they itch, I can't even scratch them. I don't care about what you think because you don't know what it was like when I was walking around crooked, don't you dare let somebody who does not know your struggle try to silence your praise. You don't know what it was like when I was losing my mind. You don't know what it was like when I had suicidal thoughts. You don't know what it was like. So why would I care what you think when you weren't crooked like me? In fact, the difference between me and you is I was crooked by being bent over, but you have a crooked heart because you can't even celebrate the fact that I left church different. Said it straight. Said it straight. Now, we know the enemy was behind this because the scriptures tell us it was a spirit of infirmity and Jesus loosed her. But you know how else we know that the enemy was behind this? Isn't this... What the devil loves to do, shove your head down. Doesn't the devil 
love to get you to look down at your dirt, down at your failures. Think about being forced to walk around like this. Some of us, you aren't naturally walking around like this, but spiritually, you're walking around like this. The enemy wants you to keep looking at your failures and looking at your shortcomings to where you are numb to the gospel. You're numb to it. Can I go a little deeper? I don't think it's a coincidence that Satan in Scripture is referred to as that old serpent. I began to do some research about this. There are really two types of serpents I want you to consider. One is a viper. Now hear me, the way a viper kills is it puts venom in your bloodline. Y'all just caught it. The way a viper kills is a viper puts venom in your bloodline. Everybody in my family is an alcoholic. Everybody in my family commits adultery. Everybody in my family has this same issue. And I don't know, maybe I'm speaking to, I don't know, just maybe five of you, but have you ever had an issue in your life where you're like, okay, I was able to break this, but this one, though, is a little harder? Like, I was able to stop cursing people out, but when it comes to my secret porn addiction, this one's harder. And I remember praying and asking God, why does it seem Certain struggles and certain addictions are harder to break. And God answered me and said, this is because this is not a typical war. This is an inherited war. I'm trying to help somebody, y'all. This was, this is a warfare granddaddy never defeated. This is a warfare great-grandmother never defeated. Which is why the statement, what goes on in this house stays in y'all know it what goes on in this house stays in this house is so dangerous because family secrets don't keep you safe they keep you sick talk holy spirit they don't keep you safe they keep you sick this is a warfare mama never defeated and daddy never defeated and auntie never defeated and the enemy thinks because this worked on your ancestors it will also work on you I'll give you Bible to better corroborate my claim. David had a lust issue. We see it with David and Bathsheba. Now, his son took it to a whole nother level, Solomon, by having 700 wives and 300 side chicks. I'm sorry, Bible, concubines. <laughs> so, bring it back, King James Version. 700 wives, 300 concubines. Also in this same bloodline, is Rahab the harlot. See, y'all missed it. This, this, the place is about to erupt. But there was somebody else in the bloodline of David. There was somebody else in the bloodline of David. Jesus, the son of David, through his blood, he shifted all the blood. And I have a feeling that we have some bloodline shifters in the building and watching online. It started in my family until it ran into me. It started with my auntie until it ran into me. The cycle stops with me. My worship is going to set it straight. My praise is going to shred it straight. My devotion is going to set it straight. My fasting is going to set it straight. It ran into the family until it ran into me. The blood shifted the blood. I feel the Holy Spirit right here. The blood shifted the blood. Stop saying I'm the only one in my family like this. It's because you're a cycle breaker. I made you to be different. I made you to be different from your family. You're not the black sheep, you're the called one. You're the one that's gonna shift the trajectory of your bloodline. Being called comes with being misunderstood. Y'all sit down, y'all rushing me. <laughs> Bloodline. That's just the viper. Remember I said the two types. 
<laughs> the first type is the viper. It kills by putting venom in your system and your bloodline. See, but the python, it doesn't kill by putting venom in your bloodline. Watch this. It kills by its stronghold. It doesn't kill by venom. It kills by its stronghold. It wraps around you, and every time you breathe, it constricts. Every time you breathe, it gets tighter. Every time whatever is squeezing, breathe. Somebody say breathe. breathe. Whatever time you breathe, it gets tighter. Watch this. God said, let there be light. There was light. Greater lights by day and lesser lights by night. He said, let there be vegetation and firmaments. And there was vegetation and firmaments. But when it came to man, he said, let us make man, who's us, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And he breathed, ruach, the breath of life on the inside of us. What is that python after the breath? That God-given thing, my goodness, that God-given ability. See, some of us don't even recognize you're not an introvert, you're into hurt. Something happened, and every time you tried, the enemy squeezed. But Jesus crushed the head of the serpent when he defeated sin and death on the cross. Somebody shout, he said it straight. He said it straight. This woman who goes nameless. We don't even know her name, but we can see her miracle walking. And, and a verse... I want us to look at verse 12, Luke chapter 13, verse 12. If we really tune in on this particular part, it says that Jesus saw her. He called her and he loosed her. He saw her and he called her. This is for anybody that thinks God has forgotten about you. I want you to put yourself in the text. Could you imagine how many people were possibly trying to get Jesus' attention? He's in the synagogue. People are there. The Pharisees and the Sadducees are sitting right on the front row. That's Bible. Matthew 23, verse 6 says, they love the best seats in the synagogue. I'm like, man, it's crazy. How did Jesus handle people who hate you always wanting a front row seat? Like, if you hate me, unfollow me. But <laughs> Pharisees love to watch and sit on the front row. They, they love it. We see it with Jesus. Bible's so relevant, right? Just preach the Bible. It's still relevant. <laughs> Jesus, out of all of the people, he sees her. Listen, I'm so grateful that we serve a God that where we could be in the midst of many, but he won't miss me. He won't miss me. He saw her, he called her, and he loosed her. Watch it. He saw her, and he called her. He called her because he saw her. I see you, I'm calling you so I can loose you. I hear your prayers saying, God, loose me, but I'm calling you. Oh, here, here comes the edges. The reason you can't enjoy the club scene anymore is because you're called. I expect it to get quiet now. The reason the high doesn't hit the same anymore is because you're called. When a man or a woman meets Jesus, you can never sin the same again. You can try, but it's not good anymore, is it, bruh? You can try, but the sex doesn't hit anymore, does it? It's because once you truly meet Jesus, you can never sin the same again. I'm not saying that you're going to be sinless, but I am saying that you will sin less. Bars. I'm not saying that you're going to be sinless, but you will be sinless. Wordplay, but with the word I don't play. <laughs> Put me on transformation worship. I got some bars. <laughs> he 
He sees her and he calls her. You can't enjoy happy hour anymore. You're trying, aren't you? I know. You trying, but that swamp thing, that margarita, it just doesn't hit anymore. You've had living water, that tastes nasty now. When you're called, hear me, when you're called, you'll begin to live like an answer. That's not what you feel on the inside, that's not them tacos you ate. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit ringing, how long will you keep sending me the voicemail? How long will you keep pressing ignore? Some of us, what we're calling insomnia, is not insomnia, it's an invitation. All day, you gave social media all of your time. Now, let's talk. Let's talk. It's not insomnia. This is me. Let's have a conversation. I'm tired, Lord. I, I, I'm so tired of being sent to voicemail. I'm ready to have a conversation. Can I stop being your last resort? Here's the thing. Jesus came so that we might have life and life more abundantly. Everybody wants the abundantly. But we don't want to give Jesus full custody. Don't. We want honorable mention Christianity. I want to thank God for this award. You know, thank you for being my Lord and Savior. But everything you do and talk about is what he died for. Now, this is for the people. That's legalism. Okay, let me show you. All right. My, my, my wife, thank you. My, my wife got pregnant around July and August of 2022. If you were to see her in August or September, you could not tell that she changed. Look, you couldn't tell that something on the inside happened. The only way you could tell, though, is if you started to spend time with her because her appetite has changed. Certain things now make her nauseous. It's not legalism. It's because she's carrying something. She's carrying something. You couldn't see it in the first trimester, but something on the inside is changing. Now, when we got to the third trimester, she couldn't hide anymore that she was carrying something. Because when you're carrying something, your whole lifestyle begins to adjust and your walk starts to be different, not due to legalism, but because I'm pregnant. I'm carrying the kingdom of heaven. I'm carrying and housing the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. But this is my problem. Why do we have so many Christians who claim to be pregnant, but your walk hasn't changed? You've been in the first trimester 10 years. You've been, when are you going to give birth to obedience? When are you going to give birth to godliness? All right, let me give you Bible so y'all can see I'm not judging. All right, let me give you Bible. Okay, uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 6, it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him, speaking of Jesus, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. What does walk mean? It means you live like this. Be careful with hanging with people who live where you fail. Like you had a moment, but they live like this. Okay, more Bible. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Don't shoot the messenger. Ephesians 5, verse 8. It says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. More Bible. John chapter 8, verse 12. It says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Your walk has changed. Y'all ready for a bar? Okay. God bought us with Christ at no charge, but he still expects change back. 
One more time. God bought us with Christ at no charge, but he still expects change back. He still wants to set some things straight. That's all I'm here to do is just remind you that Jesus wants to set some things straight. He wants to set some things straight. There's a confession I want all of us to say, and everybody watching online, if you could put this in the room in all caps. Can I get everybody under the sound of my voice? Can I get us to say, Father, Father thank you for seeing me, thank you for seeing me. calling me, Loosing me, you make crooked things straight. One more time, Father, thank you for seeing me, calling me, and loosing me. You make crooked things straight. Yeah. Crooked things straight. They talking about you. I'm straight. They didn't invite you to the playoff game. I'm straight. They got stuff to say about you. I'm straight. Not arrogance, but I was crooked and Jesus made me. Y'all talk to me straight. (laughs) He said it straight. I want full custody, not just honorable mention. When you're scared, I still want full custody. When your way seems better than mine, I still want full custody. Because if you go outside of obeying God to get something, You're going to have to stay outside to keep what you got. I want full custody. Even when you're going through storms and trials, I still want full custody. In fact, you need the rain to grow. See, if the flowers of the field, I like flowers, I guess because my last name, but if the flowers of the field could come up here and preach, you know what I believe their message would be? The rain was necessary. You don't get the blooming without the storming. See, it is only the rain. There is wisdom in between raindrops. The rain transitions us from going from seed form to crop maturity. Everybody wants the crop maturity, but then we don't want the rain. The flowers would tell you the rain was necessary. This is what you need to shift from seed form to crop maturity. I want you to see how this pine cone is about to preach to us. This pine cone has a force on the inside of it. I want you to see it. I want you to see it. This this pine cone has a forest filled with pine trees in it. Filled with it. That is on the inside of this the whole time. The whole time, all of that is on the inside of this. Now, I want to brag on my God and show you the brilliance of God. This pine cone, when it experiences a wrong atmosphere that's cold, it will close up. I want you to see this picture of a closed pine cone so that you can see I'm not up here just preaching my philosophy. This pine cone has enough sense to know certain atmospheres aren't conducive for what's on the inside of me. A pine cone. We are divinely made by God and a pine cone has enough sense to know protect myself. Pine cone. Watch this, when it's raining and it's humid and the wind is just right, then the pine cone will open up. It opens up the most in humidity. Research, I know we live in a generation, let me Google, does a pine cone really close? Do it! (laughs) They do. This is the reproductive organ of a pine tree. And it has enough sense to know when it's humid, And when the wind is just right, drop to the ground. Because the atmosphere is conducive for what's on the inside of me to be fruitful and multiply. I had to wait to get my own relationship with the Lord 
Y'all, a pine cone is preaching right now. <laughs> now, I want us to understand why certain attacks are so severe. If we could put the forest back on the screen for me. I want you to see this. The reason many times certain attacks and assaults seem so severe is because hell sees you from that level while you see yourself at this level. It doesn't make sense, all of the stuff you're going through, when you view yourself at this level. But when you view yourself at that level, it makes sense why the enemy has been after you ever since you were middle school and they introduced you to weed. Ever since your stepfather said, come on, let's have tickle time, and he molested you. Ever since somebody introduced you to pornography. Now you can understand why does it seem my whole life the enemy's been after me. It's because he sees you as a forest while you see yourself as a pine cone. We need to switch the question. It's not what's wrong with me, but rather what's in me. What's in me that's terrifying hell this much? That it's attacking me this hard? It's because you're seeing yourself like this. When hell sees you like that, it goes the same thing with the kingdom. The reason God is talking to you to do something crazy that doesn't make sense is because he's talking to you from that level while you're still in this level. Let me give you a Bible. When you have wells that you did not dig, when you have vineyards that you did not plant, remember the Lord your God. He's telling the children of Israel that while they're in the wilderness, they haven't even walked into the promise. I'm speaking to you from the forest level, even when you're at the pine cone level. I just don't understand the things that God is telling me to do, okay? Remember, he's the author and finisher of our faith, right? Okay, I wanna give you some clarity. The reason certain things God tells you doesn't make sense, he's talking to you from here while you're in here. The reason he's telling you this relationship isn't God's will for me, this is not your husband, it's because he sees you from here while you're here. So good, y'all. God, I don't, I don't know why God is telling me to just start saving, stop eating out, and start cooking. A lot of us are eating our wealth. <laughs> it's like, stop eating out. Chick-fil-A getting too, I love Chick-fil-A, but they're getting too much of your money, okay? Why is he telling you to save more? It's because he's talking to you from here while you're here. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And the reason I get it, the reason why many of us have delayed obedience is because we keep seeing our life from here. Do this for here. But what about all the stuff I did here? Okay. The blood covered that. You not with all state, but you in good hands. <laughs> they should have me on a commercial, huh? <laughs> that, that's, that's covered. So I want to give you a few points so that we can remember this, okay? Number one, natural graduation, you get a cap and gown. Spiritual graduation, you get dirt and rain. They talking about me. That's dirt. It's storming. That's rain. You're the seed of the righteous. All of those are the necessary ingredients for you to grow. You're the seed of the righteous. They're throwing dirt on you, and it's a storm. I need all of those to grow. Natural graduation, you get a cap and gown. Spiritual graduation, you get dirt and rain. Number two, natural graduation, you walk across the stage. Spiritual graduation, your walk becomes a stage. Enough with this, my platform, no. This is God's church. My following, no, this is God's people. Humble yourself. Promotion flows at, flies at low altitudes. God wants your life to be his stage. You're praying for a stage. He's saying, will you let your life be a stage for me? That's all my marriage is with Tanisha. My marriage is a stage. We love each other 
madly is a benefit. But our marriage is a stage where Jesus could stand on and we're like, he gets the glory. He's the one we're bragging about. We just love each other, but this is the one we're promoting. What would your prayers be like if you said, God, send me somebody where you could stand on the platform of our covenant and get glorified? All right. Number three, natural graduation comes with a degree. Spiritual graduation comes with adversity. If you dig in the text, you really don't hear much or anything about Goliath until David gets anointed. Okay? Because one of the signs you're truly anointed is you wake up giants. I ain't got time to say it again, sis. <laughs> Replay it. <laughs> Number four, natural graduation, you get gifts. Spiritual graduation, you get oil. Now, we've been preaching this wrong. We think oil is all about how good somebody is at something. But, but, but the original origin of oil in the Bible was really for protection. Shepherds would get sheep and pour oil on their head because fleas and ticks would burrow themselves in the sheep ear and kill them. My sheep know my voice and my sheep follow me. It's dangerous when ticks are getting in the ears of sheep. So God will anoint you so that your ability to hear, you can still hear me. Has nothing to do about your gift. We got to stop in Western Christianity always trying to make something about us. It's about us being able to hear our shepherd. Number five, natural graduation, you throw a cap. Spiritual graduation, you close the gap. The gap of who you currently are and you're called to be keeps getting closer. Keeps getting closer. The goal is who you've been called to be and who you currently are are in a committed relationship. That's what God desires. This woman, 18 years, and I don't even really have time to bother this, but I'm like, do y'all notice, did you notice where she's at? Church. Crooked, but at church. We won't come if it's too cold. I mean, I don't know how long it took her to get in, but she came to church crooked, left straight. This is for all those, I don't need to go to church. I am the church. Okay. All right. Streaming is supposed to be a substitute, not a supplement. There was a man with a withered, a crooked hand, a withered hand, in the synagogue, Jesus healed it. Matthew 21 says the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. You don't know what healing could happen if you actually get a part of community. All of this, she's still at church. Maybe it's showing us we pursue what we value. Didn't matter how cold it was, you sure went to the club though, right? You tired, got to be up at six. You still in the club. All right, that's my song, girl. <laughs> you pursue what you value. Jesus sets it straight. These points and we're done. Number one, we need an encounter. That's my whole point. Set it straight. We need an encounter with Jesus. Jesus. So that whatever area in our life is crooked, he can set it straight. The encounter. Your life, if you're trying to write your own story, you're going to be disappointed. Because I don't know, maybe if it's just me, Charles, but many times, God, when you write something that you want to do with your story, he's like, that's funny. <laughs> I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to get married right. Well, Father, I, I have plans. I, I want you to bless this. Yeah, it's not my plan. 
Many of us are crying to God over these. What you wanted. Your plan. When you have an encounter, you trust his plan. Somebody say he said it straight. Point number two, loosed. Loosed. He called her. He saw her. He called her. He loosed her. Then he touched her. Now, th this is something that I think we missed. Verse 13, Luke, same passage, same foundational text. Verse 13, it says, and he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight. Many of us missed the part that he saw her, he called her, he loosed her, but she was still like this once she was loosed. The text just says he touched her and she straightened up. Maybe the reason a lot of us are still like this is because you're not dealing with the spirit. You haven't got his touch. Religious haven't got his touch. Touched her. Then he said, straight. Point number three, his touch. That's what all this is about. His touch. My prayer, let this word touch their heart so that they can seek your face. His touch. And lastly, this is what it's all about. Number four, give him glory. Enough with us. Enough with us. Give him glory. She came to church one way. Jesus saw her, called her, loosed her, touched her. She gave God glory. What is your response to the touch of Jesus? Do we immediately make it about ourselves? Or do we recognize interwoven all throughout the fabric of Scripture? It's all about the glory of God for his name's sake not yours it's about what God wants to do the reason God sets you straight is not so that you can flex so that you can give him glory can we lift our hands all over the building father we're not lifting our hands out of religion we're lifting them as a sign of surrender and repentance. Help us, Father, to turn away from any and everything that makes it a contradiction that we're truly pregnant with your word. Father, I'm praying for the man and for the woman that are listening to this message that have been talking to you about loosing Help them to remember you desire to set some things straight. Set our ambition straight. Set our pride straight. Because God, we're here really for one reason and one reason only, and that is to give you glory. May it be said of us that when you look in the earth and you desire to get glory, we're the ones who give it back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody who agrees to that prayer would just shout in the room, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. We also want to say thank you to our faithful partners and givers here at Transformation Church. It's because of your generosity that this vision has been made possible. If you'd like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282, or you can visit our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons, as well as our live Sunday experience that begins at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.